Hey, it's Tom here from the Corona team. As part of our 10th birthday celebrations, I wanted to have a look at what's ahead in 2025. So this is kind of our roadmap, our plan for the year. Um, now, word of warning, I'll call out the word plan. Uh, this is what's planned, what we want to achieve. In no way is this a, a promise of a guarantee. Um, nothing is guaranteed in the world of development. Things can change at any time. Um, so this is the plan, what we want to do, uh, what we intend to do as of the time I'm making this video, but it can change. Uh, anyway, let's dive on in. So here's what 2025 looks like. We will have Corona 13 in June and Corona 14 in November. But before then, in March, there'll be a little branch off. We will have to release Corona 12 Update 2. And what we're going to do is work towards Corona 13. But anything that's finished, tested, and ready, we will release when we uh, do this branch to Corona 12 Update 2 in March. So one of the first things we'll be adding is tune shading. This is a long-standing request from users. And um, if you remember the Renderthon, I mentioned it in the History of Corona video. Basically, uh, for one week every year, all the developer small teams get together and decide to tackle a particular project, subject, functionality, and see how far they can get within a week. So what you're seeing on screen are the results of uh, working on tune shading for Corona. Uh, and uh, as you can see then, it's well underway. So this will be out in Corona 13. So as a side effect of introducing tune shading, we had to work on ray differentials. Uh, that work has already been completed. It'll actually be turning up pretty soon in um, one of the daily builds. And uh, this will make a difference when it comes to looking at a texture through refraction. Uh, it's a combination of, uh, depending on how far away the texture is, how strong the IOR is, and so on. But you can see here the kind of difference it will make. It will allow these textures to be much sharper when seen through refraction. So th that's already complete. Uh, and comes from the preparation work for the tune shading. Next, our work on improving uh, the connection to Vintage continues. This is something that we're doing iteratively, improving it every version, rather than making you wait for it all to be finalized before you have anything. So the next step is to allow you to render DCC animations in Vintage through the live link. That is, if you set up uh, any sort of animation in Max or C4D, which should be anything from particle systems to skeletal deformation to physics to regular animation to moving the camera, you name it. Um, you can see some examples on the left here from an early test. Um, they can then be rendered uh, through Vintage, using Vintage as the render engine, through the live link. Um, that will be something else to look forward to in Corona 13. Continuing the Vintage improvements, you be able to export multiple cameras to Vintage. Right now you can only export the main camera. In the future, for 13, you'll be able to uh, export multiple cameras at the same time. Now we'll be drawing some inspiration from the release of uh, V-Ray. Um, it had, for example, the new Remove Fireflies functionality, and it's been very well received. This is for when you have very shiny materials and a small kind of light source. Prime example is the sun reflecting off chrome and glass on a car. This can result in little flickering spots of light as a camera moves around. It's most predominant in animations. And the Remove Fireflies is a new way of processing that. It's not denoising, it's not anti-aliasing, it's not like removing fireflies in post. Um, and we are looking to see if we can implement that in Corona for version 13. Now there are some Cosmos things coming your way. First is asset variations. This has two parts. One, you can see the variations in Cosmos itself. Uh, and the second is you'll then be able to choose between those variations once you have imported the asset into your scene. Prime example is a tree. It could have winter, autumn, and summer versions. Um, you will be able to see those versions in Cosmos. Uh, clearly one will be green, one will be kind of gold or red, the other will have no leaves at all. <laughs> and uh, and once you've downloaded it into your scene, it will be a drop down in the proxy where you're able to choose which variation you want to render. Makes it very easy to create variations on your scene 
And again, you can expect that in Corona 13. And then we have Cosmos multi-select functionality. Now, some of that's there already. You can already activate multi-select, choose multiple objects, and then use download, um, or choose multiple objects that you have downloaded and choose delete. Uh, but coming in the future will be multi-select and then choose import so that you can import a collection of objects all at once from Cosmos rather than doing it one at a time. And another feature for Cosmos that I personally am very excited for is that Chaos Scans materials are moving into Cosmos. Scans are very unique. These are not just simply, um, you know, very high resolution diffuse maps and roughness maps etc it's actually a completely different way of defining a material the the classic example that you really couldn't set up any other way for me is something like a holographic file that you might find on say a christmas present um you know the wrapping of a christmas present can have that sort of holographic file effect you can't really simulate that accurately um with any sort of uh existing material in uh, Corona or in Vive, but um, the scans captures it perfectly. So as well as making them easy to find by putting them into Cosmos and easy to use, you can just drag and drop them into your scene, uh, we'll also be adding a bunch more scans. Um, right now, they're kind of focused primarily on product visualization, but we are creating and adding a selection that are specifically for ArcViz. So, um, you know, completely targeted at um, Corona users uh, who need ArcViz materials. You'll find a whole range of them being added and all of them becoming easy to find within Cosmos. Now, last time we did add the ability to create virtual tours on Chaos Collaboration. Um, what we didn't have yet was the ability for those hotspots to be generated automatically. You can upload your images, um, but then you have to create manual hotspots uh, in order to move between those images and, and for your customer to move between those images. However, uh, we're taking a leaf out of V-Ray's book and we'll be letting you uh, have those hotspots added automatically. They'll be derived from the camera positions in your scene. And so uh, what will happen is you'll upload the image and the collaboration will know all the positions of the cameras and names and will create those hotspots for you automatically. You can still do it manually, you can still edit them, but it's, uh, you know, it will get you a working virtual tour much more easily and much more speedily. Looking over at C4D in particular, we'll be adding the ability to edit instances and to use the Instance Painter functionality that's been there in Scatter for Max. So you can look forward to that turning up in Cinema 4D. We'll be adding functionality that will let you import VR scenes into Corona. Uh, this will be VR scenes saved from Enscape in particular. Uh, VR scene has various flavors to it. Uh, and the flavor we'll be focused on is basically the one saved from Enscape. So although you should then be able to import VR scenes from, say, a V-Ray export, you may or may not find um, all the features will be supported. But our aim is to support all the features that turn up in VR scene when it's exported from Enscape. This will let you take a scene from the architects working in Enscape and move it easily over to your ArcViz team um, who are working in Corona. And if you're wondering what you're looking at in terms of the images, this is just a Corona scene. I've just pretended we were um, bringing in a simpler scene from Enscape and then decorating it with Scatter once in Corona. But yeah, it really is just um, a Corona scene. Uh, obviously, we don't have the functionality yet, so I can't show it to you. So what we have is this simulation instead. And then, of course, AI. Everyone was talking about AI. And the AI Enhancer has been available for Enscape, and it will be coming to Corona and to Vive uh, this year. Hopefully in Corona 13, that's our intention. Uh, basically, you will be able to move your image onto Chaos Collaboration, and there you will be able to run the Enhancer. Its primary focus is on enhancing people and vegetation, while leaving the important things, um, from the point of view of an ArcViz artist, such as the building or the furnishings, 
pretty much intact, if not entirely intact. Um, it'll be expanded beyond what's currently available for Enscape to take advantage of things like Cryptomat to make it easy to mask out areas of the image that you want the enhancer to enhance and which parts of the image you want it to leave alone. So look forward to that coming in 13. Fingers crossed on this one. Um, if not, it will be in 14. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Corona 14 due in November. The first thing it gets are the, <laughs> the leftovers from 13. If there's anything that we didn't get to finish and get fully tested and bug free, and so didn't make it into 13, that will be the first thing as we work on for 14. And now with that in mind, our plans for 14 are not 100% set in stone. Uh, as yet. So these are things we're considering. One is the rendering of Gaussian splits. This is proving very popular in uh, V-Ray. However, there are still some ongoing work on improving tools and functionality and surrounding functionality. So rather than rush to try and put it in 13, we're going to wait till the end of the year and um, catch the latest version of the wave of Gaussian splits. Um, and as I say, we hope to see that in 14. And of course, the scatter team is busy working away as well. Something we'll see in 14, if not earlier, is um, some clumping clustering functionality in the scatter. Um, what you're seeing here is an internal demo. So functionality, UI, etc., may all change, but you can see work is well underway and we are getting results out of it. So look forward to that during this year. We'll also be looking to improve the export of scatters to Vantage, um, particularly when the scatter gets updated in your DCC and gets passed across the live link. We'll be looking into ways to making that as quick and efficient as possible, as well as uh, you know looking at keeping memory requirements, etc. down in Vantage to look for some improvements to that in 14. We'll be considering updating the Corona image editor to match the VFB2. Uh, the VFB2 has a new look, it has new functionality in the tone mapping stack, it has the auto exposure of an auto white balance, uh, and the CAE does not have any of those things yet. So one of the things we're considering is um, updating the Corona image editor, but it does match the new look and all the functionality in the VFB2. After that, things get a bit more speculative. Um, perhaps we'll add an infinite plane for infinite oceans and ground. Um, there could be some improvements to volumetric caustics, um, for example, um, when dealing with what I would call a, a thin or a sparse volumetric material. Right now, the uh, volumetric caustics works very well with a dense material, like a thick fog. It's not so effective with a thin material, like a light mist, so we may see some improvements there. We might start looking into a QT rewrite. This wouldn't be complete, a total rewrite by 14, but we could, for example, focus on one or two materials, um, you know, the Corona physical material, for example, and that will both let us see how much work is involved and see how much benefit we get out of the rewrite. So we could see some of that in 14. By and large, we'll also be looking at the ideas portal where you are submitting your ideas to see what's getting the most requests and seeing what we can implement in 14. And not to forget the developers will be developing. We'll encourage them to put their magic thinking hats on and see what they can come up with as brand new, fresh ideas unique to Corona. Um, see what we can do that no one else has done before. Um, you'll excuse the AI images in here, but I did think they were quite funny, so I decided to pop them in. Well, thanks for watching, um, going through our plans for 2025 with us. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope there's something in there that's getting you excited. There's a lot that's getting me excited, but of course it's more important for it to be exciting to you, our customers. So uh, do let me know in the comments and the feedback. Um, certainly, obviously, things get more and more open to change the further on to the year we get. So Corona 14 towards the end of the year, still very flexible on what may or may not be in there. And we'll certainly be reviewing things like um, what you all have voted for on AHA, for example, uh, before we finalize that.
But anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed Kona's 10th birthday overall. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.